So Ian Howitt? Go in. Of these three things, I am absolutely certain. One, I know how to make the world a better place. Two, it is a damn good thing I no longer get drunk. And three, it is also a damn good thing that I was never able to find a pair of skinny jeans in my size. Because if I still got drunk and I could find a pair of skinny jeans in my size, I would go to the bar right now, drink my body weight and 100 proof alcohol, then get in my car, drive to the nearest mall where I would buy a pair of skinny jeans so small you could count every last hair on my perfectly sausage rolled little thighs. I would be the first guy in history to roll commando and a pair of skinny jeans while rocking a tattooed bullseye perched atop the crest of my beautifully sasquatched ass crack. You know, for irony. <laughs> then I would go to every indie rock show that I could get on the guest list for. I would stand stock still and emotionless as if indifference had become the very essence of every cell in my body. And in between songs as the lead singer was brushing the hair back down over her eyes or mussing up his grizzly Adam's beard, I would shout at the top of my drunken lungs, you know! <laughs> you guys were way better when you were just some shitty garage band that nobody had ever heard of. You guys are really sold out. And by the way, I think you owe the Kinks, the Stranglers, Radiohead, and Joy Division about five million dollars each for ripping off their sound, you fucking little ass hats. <laughs> then I would go to hip hop shows and I would yell at every MC who took the microphone, You are the reason! The Paul Robes is rolling over and over and over in his grave. You were mere seconds away from resurrecting the ghost of Marvin Gaye. And when he comes back, he's going to bust a cap in your ass because you're just that fucking whack. And he is just that fucking gangster. <laughs> then I would strip fuck naked and go to every poetry slam in the country. I would get on the mic, my nervous little pecker turning itself away in shame. My bull sucked happily up into my spleen beneath my shriveled little scrotum like some lobotomized hamster brain. And I would say, what a full of shit! <laughs> we don't know anything more about life and living than anybody else. We just happen to be moderately literate, which means we can make our pain sound eloquent and meaningful. And most of us aren't even any good at that. <laughs> then I would roll my happy little hammered ass over to the local Occupy encampment, where I would ask them when they intended to replant the grass. They just spent the last ten months trampling the dirt, you goddamn hippies. <laughs> Then I would tell them to stop including me in their sweeping generalizations because I, for one, do not want to be a part of the 99% because I resent anything that tries to reduce me to a number. And I, for one, do not want to be part of the world where everyone's panties are always in a fucking bunch. So yeah, I can honestly say it is a damn good thing I no longer get drunk and that I was never able to find a pair of skinny jeans in my size because who the fuck would want to be with a guy like that? <laughs> Best part of my day is getting a text message from my fiance that says... I love you. If more people spent more time trying to find something like that, this world would be a much, much better place. <laughs>